Hola Seekers and bienvenidos to another Timeless Reading where we are going to find out who is currently manifesting you and get some insight on the overall energy and personality of this person as well as the why they are manifesting you. What is their intention behind this? And also see how you can benefit from meeting or connecting with this person. What you can get out of this connection. And at the very end, we will find out how it is that you will be meeting or connecting with this person and when you will be meeting or connecting with them. And if the reading hasn't gotten ridiculously long by then, I might even pull out some extra cards to get any last messages, advice, or guidance from spirit or possibly even from the higher self of this person who is manifesting you. Oh, and just a heads up, I will be shuffling the cards on camera for you guys. It has come to my attention that some people feel the need to see the decks shuffled on camera for their own personal reasons, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna shuffle on camera, even though there's a lot of decks I'll be using for this reading, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so there are three groups to choose from. For group one, we have this doodle slash painting of a bird that I made up. Oh, and the date here is August 1st of 2020, just in case that date calls out to you for whatever reason. For group two, we have another painting that was inspired by an image I found on Google. For group three, we have this postcard of donkeys and it does have the number nine here and it says pa ma and me and there is a date here as well november 30 as well as the message all well i'm not sure what this says okay but as always take as much time as necessary to choose your group you can pause the video if you need more time and once you have chosen your group, then head on over to the comment section where the timestamps are provided. Okay, so now that you have chosen, let's skip on over to your reading. Let's go! Hola Seekers! So we are about to find out who is currently manifesting you and receive some insight on what the overall energy and personality of this person is like as well as why they are manifesting you. What is their intention behind this? And also see how you can benefit from meeting or connecting with this person. And to end the reading, we are also going to find out when and how you will be connecting with or meeting this person. And if the reading isn't already ridiculously long by then, I might even pull out some extra cards to receive any last messages, advice, or guidance that Spirit has for you or that the higher self of this person might have for you. Okay, but now let's get into your reading. So you guys chose this beautiful funky bird that came to me like a surprise. I didn't expect him to come through when I was doodling about but, ooh, actually this might be denoting that this person comes into your life like an unexpected surprise. And when they come through, they really stand out for you. At least that's the vibe that I'm getting. Their energy feels quite quirky. They might actually be born in the month of August. Or you might even be meeting this person on the month of August. But again, it doesn't have to be the case. This is just the day that I drew this bird on. <laughs> but... As I connected with the energy of this group, the messages that came to mind were rising to the occasion, as well as level-headed and serendipity. So I do feel that this person, I'm getting the word loyal. They are quite loyal. Um, I'm getting a bit of an introverted energy. Yes, they might stand out. Yes, they might be quite eccentric in their style, their way of thinking, but I don't feel like they are a person who purposefully calls for attention or is the loudest in the room. I feel they are quite reserved, but they can definitely rise to the occasion. So if they need to come out of their comfort zone for whatever reason, they will do so. I'm getting this phrase, I'm sorry, but they are not a person who chickens out, especially when the occasion calls for them to be courageous, to be brave, to stand up for themselves or possibly even stand up for their loved ones or for something that they believe in. 
Now, I do feel like this is a person who is quite level-headed. I do feel like this is someone who is a visionary. They plan for the future. They have goals. They have ambitions. And they dream. They are dreamers. But they are also realists which is a nice balance because this is not a person who simply hopes and dreams and wishes and prays, but they actually put in the work to make their dreams a reality, to accomplish their goals. Now with the word serendipity, this is someone who believes in fate and destiny. I'm also getting a bit of a child-like purity to this person. And one of the other words that came to mind actually was the word stolen. I'm actually getting two messages. They are afraid that their innocence might be stolen from them or that they will lose their innocence or they felt that their innocence was stolen from them in some way. It might be through some hardships, some difficulties in life. It might be through a very specific and unpleasant experience. But yeah, I do feel like there's some hurt or pain or fear that this person is keeping hidden. They don't really share it with others. Um, oh, and one last thing I noticed when connecting with the energy of this group is that I had to write down the messages that were coming through. I had to write them down. So I wrote them down on this post-it. So I do feel like this is a visual person. I'm also getting touch. They might like to express affection through physical touch and i also do feel like this person might enjoy writing they might be a writer they might write poetry lyrics as a hobby or they might even enjoy drawing or painting yeah i do feel like they have a creative or artistic side they might do that as a career or as a hobby Okay, but now I'm going to move into the cards. I'm going to place this birdie over here. And the first card that falls out will let us know more about this person's overall energy. Okay, so let us see. What is the overall energy of the person who is currently manifesting group one? Okay, is that the, no. You need to fall out, y'all. Okay, that was a bit aggressive. I feel it's this card, so I'm going to take this one. Um, you see, this is why I don't shuffle on camera, because I'm a mess. I'm a clumsy person. Okay, and these cards over here will let us know more about the personality, their 3D personality. Okay. Oh, that was fast. And we have Harmony, the seventh house, Sun and Libra. Oh, and for this card, I'm sorry, we have the Two of Cups. Oh, so sweet. I'm sorry if I'm a mess, you guys, but this is how it usually goes. Sometimes I don't flip the cards over until I record the reading, so <laughs> if I forget to flip them over, it's because habit. Okay, and this card over here will let us know what is it that they are currently going through in their lives when they are manifesting you. So hopefully this will give us more insight on why they are manifesting you. sometimes when we are in a certain energy um, that's when we call for it can influence us to manifest certain people or things or connections or relationships into our lives so for them we have the eight of pentacles number 44 the broken glass and it did come out in reverse so I'm going to take it in reverse so first and foremost we do have Sun and Libra here, so this person might be a Libra Sun, but they don't have to be. This is more denoting the energy they are exuding. But seeing that we have the Two of Cups as well as Libra, both of these energies denote balance. So this is someone who seeks to have balance in their life in all aspects or areas of their life. But I do notice there's one area in their life where they are not 
really finding that balance. And that is in their work life. I see that with this Eight of Pentacles over here. The Eight of Pentacles, when it is upright, it speaks about dedication, working diligently on something to better it, to improve. But when it's in reverse, it gives me a bit of a workaholic energy. So this is someone who might spend a little too much time working or focused on their work. Having Libra and the Two of Cups, this does give me a very loyal vibe. This person is quite loyal, very dedicated to their relationships, to what they love. And I do feel like this person loves what they do. They love their work. And I feel that they often use their work or their passions as an excuse to not think about certain things or to avoid certain matters. And having the Two of Cups here, I feel like one of the things that they are trying to avoid thinking about is relationships. Sun and Libra is someone who is quite the romantic, quite the idealist as well. And I'm noticing how this person over here is actually looking up towards or facing this Two of Cups energy over here. The seventh house does speak about long-term partnerships. So I do feel like this person is seeking a long-term partnership, a long-term relationship, is seeking their life partner, in other words. Because I was feeling that this person does believe in fate and destiny. This person might even be seeking their so-called soulmate. And having this person almost naked here, this is someone who bears their heart and soul. They are a loving person. They are loving by nature. They care about forming deep and meaningful connections. So the connections that they have already established are meaningful to this person. And I feel like how they show up in public is pretty much how they are in private. This is someone who is a bit like an open book. They are not pretentious. They are not hypocrites. I do feel they have quite high standards, which is definitely okay. And so Sun and Libra always gives me a vibe of someone who you would not like to mess around with. This is a person who can see right through you and who can easily detect when someone is putting up an act. This is someone who values honesty, values loyalty, and respect. Because this person will respect you. And if it ever happens to be the case that they cross your boundaries, please let them know because they will listen and they will take note of it. Meaning they will not do it again. This is someone who I feel works very hard to improve. Like I said, this is someone who seeks to find balance in their life. And I do feel like they're very spiritual people. Um, they might meditate quite a bit, practice some form of spirituality, because I feel like this is someone who is seeking to find some type of inner peace. But looking at this image more closely, I'm noticing how this person is peeking into the cup of this other person. So I feel like they feel something is missing in their life. And this might relate actually to the message I was receiving at the beginning. The message of stolen. It might not be that something was stolen from them, but that they feel something is missing in their life. And they can't quite pinpoint what it is. They might think it's a relationship. They might think it's a romantic partner. They might think it's romantic love that's missing in their life. And they're seeking for that. And it's not to say that this person isn't grateful or isn't happy or doesn't experience happiness. Because with this sun energy, I feel that they do. And seeing this image here, this is someone who is quite grateful for what they have. But I feel like there's times where they feel this sense of loss, where they feel this vacancy or this hole in their very being. And they're trying to fill that hole or find what is needed to fill that gap. Now, Libra and Sun is a very artistic energy, very creative. So like I said, this person might be a creator or delve into the creative arts. Um, I'm getting singer, writer. I'm getting a lot of poetry with this image. 
um, someone who might even appreciate philosophy or the arts. Um, but this is also someone who loves being in nature and connecting with nature because this is someone who is moved by the beauty of nature. This Sun and Libra energy is also denoting someone who loves beauty and they love love is also what I'm getting. And looking at this image, I'm thinking of tea. So this person might really like hot be beverages over cold beverages. So they might really enjoy a cup of tea. They like things that really calm and soothe them, that really help them feel at peace and at home. When you meet them, this person will have recently come out of a very difficult time because I'm getting a bit of an aggravated energy, someone who is a bit in distress, someone who might be feeling a bit depressed, someone who might even be worried about their future, a bit confused in their life. And it might be the case that they try to get through this or they feel that the way that they will keep themselves from relapsing or kind of thinking back on those difficult times or moments is by pouring themselves into their work. It's like their work, their passion keeps them busy. Like I said, this person does have high standards, so they might be quite a perfectionist. Um, I do feel like they tend to be quite hard on themselves. And that's something that they are working through. So when you meet them, this is something that they are working through. The other thing I'm getting is that this person is very self-aware and is working to become even more self-aware. With all these birds being here, I... S oh! <laughs> birds. Um, so birds might be pretty significant um, for this person. Um, they might be a sign for them in regards to this manifestation. But birds for me personally signify dreams. So I do feel like this person has a lot of dreams. This person has already accomplished several goals by this time, but they are still working on accomplishing even more goals. So this person might be working very hard when you meet them or might be pretty busy at their work. Yes, but I do feel like this person is quite the romantic. They are seeking their life partner. This is someone who does believe in true love, who does believe in destiny and does believe in forever. So this is someone who is ready to commit and quite beautiful. I feel like this person, like I said, they really stand out. Um, it might be their aura, their energy, but I do feel like they have a lot of charisma. There's something about them. It just pulls you to them. Yeah, and this person, they cannot stand injustice. They, they cannot stand it. And so they will seek to help those that they feel are being treated unfairly. Um, okay, but now I'm going to move into why this person manifested you. But I feel like we already got some insight in regards to that, but maybe we can get a little bit more information. So, oh, that one came out. Mm, mm -hmm, judgment. So judgment speaks about awakenings, renewal, self-evaluation, as I said, this person is constantly seeking to improve. And so I feel like one of the reasons that they are manifesting you is because they are actually wanting to step into the next chapter of their lives. And I feel this next chapter involves you, involves a very special, deep and meaningful connection because the judgment card is quite spiritual as well. Like I said, it speaks about awakenings. So I do feel like this person has or is currently going through a spiritual awakening. Like I said, I do feel like this person is quite spiritual. So they might have already... Hmm, received some insight in regards to who is a member of their soul family in regards to their soulmate or their divine counterpart is the other message I'm getting. And it might be that their intention is to call in their divine counterpart because like I said, this person is seeking a long-term relationship. They are looking for the real deal <laughs> is what I'm getting. But whoops, I wanted to... Mm, let me try that again. I wanted to pull out a um, clarifier. Um, I'm not sure how you're feeling about this person, but I get the vibe that this is someone who has already connected with someone in the spiritual, someone in the 5D. 
And because they are trying to manifest you, it may, might very well be you who they have connected with in the 5D. We do have healer as well as blind. We do have a snake in the healer card. And as you can see, the snake is shedding its old skin. And this is speaking about rebirth, transformation, letting go of the old in order to embrace the new. And we did mention previously that this person who is manifesting you is someone who is constantly transforming and embracing change. Maybe it's even the case that this person hasn't been in a romantic relationship for a very long time or at all and they are seeking to step into that. They are trying to manifest that into their lives and it might be you who is a vibrational match to who they are trying to call in. Now, for others of you, this might be someone who is simply looking for a deeper connection, as we mentioned before. Maybe they are seeking for someone who they can open up to in a more intimate and vulnerable way because we do have this healer energy here. So I do feel like this person is also looking for a healing relationship or a healing connection. I keep getting the message of deep conversations, being able to bear yourself to someone, heart and soul, share your pain, your suffering with someone without feeling judged. Yeah, I feel like this person is looking for a connection or for someone who will not judge them. They want to share their most deepest desires, their most deepest thoughts with somebody. Because like I said, even though this person is almost like an open book, you know, they're not pretentious, there is something that they feel like they can't share with others. And it's something like their worries, their insecurities, their doubts. That's what I'm getting with this blind card. And so they hope they can find someone who who can help them see that everything is going to be all right. I do feel like this person secretly wants to be reassured and wants to be comforted and wants to be nurtured. They themselves are very nurturing, very affectionate, but I don't feel this is someone who demands affection from others. They yearn for it, they long for it, they want for it in a very specific way is what I'm getting. Um but they don't ask of it from others. So if the romantic aspect of this reading is not resonating with you, this person might very well be simply trying to manifest a platonic connection that is highly spiritual, that is very healing, that is comforting, that is non-judgmental. Now with this blind card, as I mentioned, it might very well be the case that this person has already connected with your energy in the 5D or has already got an insight about their possible soulmate, be it platonic or romantic or their divine counterpart. And right now they are trying to manifest that person into their life because with the blind card, it's like they know that this person exists, but they just don't know who they are. So this person is simply looking to find out who this soulmate is, who this counterpart is, who is it that they are connecting with in the 5D, who is it that they share this soul bond with. They no longer want to be in the dark about this is what I'm getting. They feel ready to move to the next level of this spiritual connection, to embark, as we mentioned, into the next chapter of their journey. And I do feel like they themselves feel that the next chapter of their journey involves this connection, involves you. Okay, but now I am going to look into how it is that you can benefit from meeting or connecting with this person. Okay, so... Let's get one card. And we have <laughs> number 22, Divine Masculine. And actually, I was going to say I'm really bad at Roman numerals, but this is the number 20, right? For some reason, I kept wanting to say 22 because I felt like the number 22 was significant. 
for you guys. And look, we do have the number 22 here, which I believe is a master number. This person might have been born on the 22nd of a month, or you might be meeting this person on the 22nd of a month. I'm also getting February 2nd um, with this number. But the number two does speak about balance, harmony. It reminds me of the two of cups. So it also speaks about relationships and counterparts. And we do have divine masculine here. And the message at the bottom says, the frequency of divine masculine supports our strong, focused, and active side, allowing it to express itself while helping us to bring our dreams and ideas into form with kindness and wisdom. Yeah, kindness and wisdom, I feel, are also adjectives you can use to describe this person who is manifesting you. <laughs> but the first thing I'm getting with this card is that this might very well be your divine counterpart. Now, I know that might not resonate with everybody, but it might resonate with a few. And if so, this person who is manifesting you might very well be the divine masculine. Now, we all hold both masculine and feminine energies within us. That is what creates the balance and brings about wholeness. But it is often the case in which we tend to embody more of one energy than the other. So I do feel like this person who is manifesting you is embodying more of this masculine energy. And that is the reason why I feel we received the Eight of Pentacles in reverse to describe their energy or the energy that they are currently in because the masculine energy is about work, is about action. So I do feel like this person is currently overworking themselves, doing too much to overcompensate for something that they feel they are lacking in their lives. And if you feel like your masculine energy itself has not been quite balanced as of late, where maybe you yourself have also been overworking yourself, or maybe it could be the other end of the spectrum where you haven't been feeling very motivated as of late, where you have been lacking passion. I, I just received this message. Maybe some of you feel like you don't have purpose to do, to work, to simply be, then I feel what you can benefit from this connection is actually receiving inspiration and, and motivation because this person is so hardworking, so passionate about what they do. I do feel that they will inspire this energy within you as well. They might even help you realize what you are passionate about. And if you already have dreams, if you already know what you are passionate about, I feel that this is someone who, if you share your dreams with this person, they will be your number one motivator and supporter. They will make you take accountability for your dreams. So they will be constantly up to date with you, asking you, what have you done today to get you closer to your dreams or your goals? And if they can help you accomplish your dreams, they will. This is someone who will work with you. And also, this is someone who will give you the safe space to simply share your dreams or to dream. With this judgment card, this is someone who will not judge you. And remember, this is someone who, what they ask of someone else, they know they themselves can deliver. So if they are just asking for no judgment from you, it's because they themselves will not judge you. If it is the case that you tend to overwork yourself or you tend to drown in your work to distract yourself from other things, I feel this is something that you both will be able to relate in and work together on. That's what I'm also getting with the number 22 because it is the number two repeated twice. So it feels like your energies, they are very quite similar. So I do feel like one of the things you can benefit from connecting with this person is actually healing some wounds or some traumas that might be manifesting in this overworking yourself type of energy or having this imbalanced relationship with your work or any other aspects of your life. Yeah, I do feel like this is a very healing connection. Um, this is a connection in which you can communicate because we do have this blue color here. It's reminding me of the throat chakra. It feels very open. You can really open up with this person. But I actually wanted to pull out another clarifier for this one. So, 
how will you benefit from connecting or meeting this person? Okay. And we have sweet tooth number 43, hankering, temptation, ardor, intimacy, proposal, message of love. Yeah, intimacy. You can be quite intimate with this person, <laughs> emotionally intimate, sharing your opinions with this person without any filter. But for those of you who were resonating with that romantic connection or this person being your divine counterpart, um, we do have message of love here. We do have the key term ardor. So if you have been seeking to feel safe with someone to explore your sexuality, sensuality, to explore physical intimacy, that's something you can benefit from this connection. If you have been looking for that type of passionate love, that's something also you can benefit from this connection. As we mentioned, this person is quite passionate and I don't think it's just in regards to their personal projects or endeavors. And with the message of sweet tooth, I feel like this person doesn't mind being cute or acting cute or being extremely affectionate. So if you like that, if you're into that or you want to explore that, that is something you can benefit from connecting with this person. And this is also someone who will be constantly, constantly letting you know how much you mean to them, how wonderful you are, how much they love you. This is someone who will be constantly reassuring you that they feel deeply for you, that you matter to them, that you mean so much to them. I feel like this is someone who will treat you often, maybe take you out on really nice dates or getaways, but like this is someone who will constantly be surprising you with little gifts, if not with events. Or like writing you little love notes or letters, or if this is more of a platonic relationship for you, this is like sending you funny texts to brighten up your day, asking you how you've been, buying you your favorite snacks. I just get the feeling that this person is ready to give all their love, all the love that they have been reserving for their special someone. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of sensual energy with this sweet tooth, so... Um, okay, but now I'm going to pull out some cards to find out when and how you will be meeting this person. Now, in regards to the when, I'm not going to give any specific time frames because we are all on different journeys and time is never concrete. Things can speed up or slow down according to our actions, choices, mentality. So what I'm going to do instead is find out where you will be in regards to your life when you do encounter or connect with this person. Okay? And for that, let me draw one card. And I feel like that will give you a better idea than if I were to give you a time frame. Um, and sorry, it fell out off camera, but it is the Four of Wands. And it actually fell out in reverse. And we have feeling unwelcome, family issues, and animosity. And for how you will be meeting this person, we have the Six of Wands. And the key terms are achievement, recognition, being in the spotlight. Wow. Okay, so the Four of Wands. So being in reverse, this can very well denote that this person might come in or you might come into this person's life when plans are canceled. So for example, let's say you were planning to go to a wedding, but then all of a sudden this wedding gets canceled. And I don't know why I just received this message, but it may well be that the reason for why this wedding got canceled is a scandalous one. Or the reason for why this event gets canceled really stands out to you. And I am... Um, that song... I forgot what it's called. Um, it's coming to mind. It's something that comes off a bit ironic. And that's why it stands out so much. 
this might even be an event that you yourself created and for whatever reason it gets cancelled or it doesn't go as planned. We do have the Six of Wands here actually. I feel like these two go together. The Six of Wands denotes an energy of success, triumph. It speaks about coming home victorious, being celebrated for something, being in the spotlight. So it does speak about recognition and fame and being seen by a lot of people at once. And we do have this image of someone graduating. So it might be the case that it is your graduation day and for whatever reason, it gets canceled or maybe it starts raining or if it's inside a stadium, the lights go out or something like that. And that's when and how you meet them in that place. But with the Six of Wands being here, there is someone who is kind of standing out from the crowd. There is someone who is being celebrated, someone who is in the spotlight. And actually the Four of Wands can denote like festivals and concerts, like I said, events. So this message might only resonate for a few of you. It might be the case that this person I was getting a creative energy from them. They might actually be a performer and it is through one of their events that you meet them. Let's say that you end up buying a ticket to see their show, but the show gets canceled or maybe there is some problem with your ticket or maybe you lose your ticket, but some way or the other you manage to get into the show and maybe you manage to even get better seats. You get to see this person up close and this person gets to see you and so this person stands out because they are performing, they are on stage and you stand out to this person because you're right at the front of the stage. <sighs> Something like that is what I'm getting. Or it might be after the show where you meet them but it just feels like something doesn't go according to plan. And it might seem like a bummer, but at the end of the day, that it's divine intervention to actually get you two to see each other and to meet person to person. Now, during the time that you meet them, you might also be going through some family issues. Maybe you just recently had a disagreement with a parent or a family member. Maybe it was because you wanted to go to this event and, and it was on the same day that there was some family event happening and there was some conflict about that. Whether you were going to go to this event or go to this family celebration or family reunion or event. But it does have to do with a cancellation or something doesn't go according to plan and that makes you to come together in some way. And with the Six of Wands, someone is in the spotlight, someone is being celebrated. And because they are being celebrated, because they are in the spotlight, that allows for the other person to recognize them, to see them. And the Six of Wands also speaks about having the advantage. And I feel like on this day that you meet this person, you will be radiating. You have the advantage in that to this other person, you will glow for them. And so they cannot miss you is what I'm getting. You stand out from the crowd. And once they see you, they cannot unsee you. And I feel like for them, they will have this instant knowing that, oh, that's them. That's the person I have been manifesting. That's the one I have been calling in. They will just have this knowing. And so they will gravitate towards you. But I do get a lot of joy and excitement with the Six of Wands energy. I feel like you yourself will feel very chirpy when you see this person or connect with them. It's like your energy will shift. If you were feeling low, all of a sudden you're going to be super excited. And that might be a telltale sign for you that, oh, there's something going on here. I'm really vibing with this person. And I just keep visualizing someone who can't stop smiling. <laughs> so when this person sees you, they just can't stop smiling. And giggling, giggling, laughing. Um, I'm getting a bit of a dorky energy, which is very sweet. Um, I don't mean it in a bad way. It's super sweet and adorable. And they feel, they feel quite victorious. Um, seeing you, meeting you, being with you, being around you, speaking with you 
speaking to you and having your attention. Having your attention makes them feel like they are the center of the universe. <laughs> Yeah, but that's what I'm getting with these two cards. But now I'm going to pull out just one last message. Um, these are handmade cards that contain quotes from the animated series Adventure Time. Okay, this one. It says, I don't think you've mastered it yet. Well, not duh. I just started. Huh. With this quote, it's making me think that this for one might also be um, denoting that when you meet them, it's when you're feeling very bummed out about something that you feel you have not succeeded at. And it's something that you just recently started on. So for example, just an example, maybe you decided to open up a YouTube channel um, and it's just been two months since you opened it and you haven't reach the results that you wanted to or expected to and you're feeling pretty bummed out about that. I feel like if you were to speak about this with this person who is manifesting you, they will tell you, well, hey, it's okay. Don't be too hard on yourself. You just started. You know, it takes some time. So give yourself some time. Some things take time. Um, okay, but those are all the messages I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. If you're new to this channel and you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in my website and the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and until the next moment, bye-bye. Hola Seekers! So we are about to find out who is currently manifesting you and see what is the overall energy and personality of this person who is manifesting you as well as the why. Why are they manifesting you? What is their intention behind this? Then we are going to see how you can benefit from connecting, reconnecting, or meeting with this person. And last but not least, we are going to find out when you will be meeting them, connecting or reconnecting with them, as well as how. And if the video isn't already ridiculously long by this point, I might even pull out some extra cards to get any last messages, advice or guidance that Spirit may have for you. Oh, and just a heads up, you guys, I will be shuffling the cards on camera. So please bear with me if the cards don't fall out in the first shuffle or two. Okay, but now let's get into your reading. So as I connected with the energy of this group, the messages that came to mind were stay tuned and recorded. Now I get the feeling that for the majority of you, not all of you, the person who is trying to manifest you is someone who you have already had some contact with, maybe possibly been in a relationship with or had some type of connection with. This is someone that you know. Because with the message recorded, it feels like you have history with this person. And with the message, stay tuned, it's like there's still more to this story. And you guys did choose this painting with a bend in the road. And it's giving me this vibe that something is awaiting just around the bend. I keep getting this vibe of coming back home, of returning, because... The other message that came through actually was childhood. So this might be someone who you knew when you were a child, who maybe you briefly interacted with, and then this person had to move or relocate for whatever reason, and now they're coming back home, or they are simply relocating or visiting wherever it is that you are reciting. Because the message I get is, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. So like I said, for some of you, this might be someone that you do know who you had a relationship with. And for others of you, this might be someone who you briefly encountered, who you briefly interacted with. Maybe you don't even really recall this person because the interaction was so brief. And there was something about your first interaction or encounter that really struck each other. I'm getting the word engraved. We did receive the word recorded. It's like even though your conscious awareness or your conscious mind did not see this interaction as something important enough to remember, your souls recorded that moment and kept it with them. It's like I'm getting the vibe of a bookmark. It's like they bookmarked it and they said, hmm, I'm going to come back to this later. 
I'm going to go out and venture into my own personal journey, do what I need to do. And when it's time, I'm going to come back to this because this is precious. This means something. This person, this soul is meaningful to me. This might be how this person felt. This might be a reciprocal energy, but I am getting that vibe of coming back home to someone. Um, the last message that came through was aroma. <laughs> so, oh, 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 you know how memories, sometimes a memory gets triggered by a specific scent or a specific smell. So there is a specific scent that you will relate to this person, or maybe there's a specific scent or aroma that this person relates to you, and it reminds them of home for some reason. Um, if you have been in a relationship or have connected with this person, maybe they wore a very specific cologne or perfume or they had a very specific aroma to them. And if so, this might be serving as confirmation if you have someone in mind. But yeah, those are all the messages I have for you guys. So now I am going to get into the cards. I'm going to put this one over here. Also, some of you may live close to the mountains or this person might have resided near the mountains. Okay, but now we are going to find out what the overall energy of this person who is manifesting you is like. So may we please see what the overall... Okay, there we have it, one card. And we have, ooh, the Ace of Cups. Okay, sorry, <laughs> that's a nice energy. And now we are going to find out what is the personality. Well, get more information in regards to the, this person's personality. Okay, so let's see spirit. Ooh, that's too many cards. So I'm gonna sh shuffle one more time. I'm sorry, you guys, if I frustrate you with my shuffling. I tend to be a clumsy person, so I will be a mess. I apologize. Um, okay, but the personality of this person. Okay, we have a card and we have Mars and Aries impulsiveness, the first house. Okay, and lastly, we are going to get some information on what is going on in their life when they are manifesting you. And this can also give us more insight in terms to the why they are manifesting you. Because I feel like when we are in a certain energy or we are going through certain things, it inspires us to call in certain relationships, opportunities, connections, and so on. So let's see what is going on nope. in this person's life when they are manifesting Ooh, this group and we have the two of cups number 19 the gentleman group one also received the two of cups but it was for what their overall energy was like so that's pretty interesting so we do have a lot of cup energy which is associated with the element of water so this person might be a water sun moon or rising or may have water predominant in their chart but we also have the first house the energy of aries here so this person might be a fire sign sun moon or rising or might have fire predominant in their chart or they may have mars and aries i only mentioned these um, just in case it helps to serve as confirmation but remember this is more denoting the overall energy so with the ace of cups being here this is someone who exudes a lot of love this person is quite a giver they seek to make sure that others are comfortable that others are happy and that others are thriving now because this is cup energy cups have to do with the emotional realm so this is someone who is quite affectionate this is someone who seeks to reassure others to comfort others they always have the time to listen to someone to sit with them to talk with them to give them some advice i do feel like this is someone who gives beautiful advice i get like a very poetic um, type of person their words have deep meaning you might often see them smiling and laughing but you know what noticing how we have all these like 
droplets of water going everywhere, it does give me a bit of a chaotic energy. They can be a bit impulsive with their emotions is what I'm getting. I feel they try to contain themselves a lot. For example, if they're feeling sad, if they're feeling overwhelmed, they try not to show it, but it's very difficult for them not to simply express what they feel. So there might be a bit of mood swings going on with this person. I don't know why I just received this message, but I feel like this person might have very soft, sleek, or shiny hair. Hmm, I wonder, having this Aries and Mars here, this person might, on the down low, and I only say on the down low because maybe they don't really show it, they don't really express it or share it with others, they might suffer from anxiety, or there might be this constant fear of not being liked or not being accepted. They might fear being left out in the cold or being left behind or forgotten is what I'm getting. But this is someone that can be very vulnerable with you. Um, if you sit down to talk with them, they will open up to you. And I feel that's where maybe some of the trauma has occurred in that it may very well be the case that this person has opened up to others in a very vulnerable and raw way but those same people use their vulnerability against them in some way so you know what i'm getting a bit of a nervous energy it's like this person's nature is to be open is to be vulnerable but because they've had some very bad experiences in the past they are constantly going back and forth on whether they should open up or they shouldn't they are constantly worrying about whether they are oversharing or if they are maybe being too cold. And it feels like this person wants to be authentic. They don't want to be pretentious or a hypocrite, but their past experiences has them constantly doubting their own true self, um, which is quite unfortunate and quite sad. But Yes, I do feel like this is a very loving person. This is also a person who is working on self-love. They are working to reconnect with themselves and feeling worthy, feeling like they are enough and that they are loving. I feel like this is a person, even though they are very generous, very kind, very sweet, they often worry and doubt whether they are a good or a kind person. Having the Ace of Cups here, this person might be quite a social butterfly. They might tend to have a lot of friends or be part of a lot of social groups. And they might often take the leadership role. This is an Ace. Ace is number one. We do have the first house showing up here. The number one always reminds me of leadership. So this person is a leader. Even if no one announces them as the leader, they will take on that role themselves, especially if they don't see any movement, any action, any progress. And I also get the feeling that this is someone who is quite a visionary, so they see the potential in things, they see the potential in people, and because they are able to see this potential, it drives them to be quite impatient because they want others to also notice the potential that they see and work towards it. So I don't feel like this is someone who wastes time. And having the Ace of Cups and the Two of Cups here, this person might fall in love pretty easily. They might enter into relationships fairly quickly. Um, and it might be because of that fear of being left out on the cold that they feel they need to kind of form a connection, put a label on it. Um, in order to feel more secure. Because actually the Mars and Aries energy, it always feels like they can be better. Um, that's why I was mentioning this working through self-worth issues. Because I feel like this person can be quite hard on themselves. And there might even be this competitive nature or this tendency to compare themselves to other people. And that's why they're always on the go, go, go. That's why they're always working. They're always striving for more. Because if they feel life is a competition, there will never be rest for them because the moment that they do decide to rest, they will feel like someone will get ahead of them and thus they will be left behind. And that really brings them a lot of anxieties. Now the Two of Cups does speak about relationships, does speak about partnerships, connections, promises. I'm not really getting that this is the case for all of you, but for some of you, this person might be in a romantic or committed relationship by this point. 
we are going to get more information on the why they are manifesting you, but I feel that for some of you, it might very well be the case that if this person is manifesting you, it might be because they are actually looking for a business partnership, it might be a friendship, it might even be a collaborator. Um, someone who can work with them, someone who can build something with them. Because with this impulsive energy, I do feel like this person has come up with an idea. Something has struck them and they are eager to get started on this. They feel, because we do have this lucky charm here, they do feel like this will bring them a lot of prosperity, like this will be a success. So if you are a creator, if you own a business, if you feel like you yourself can benefit from a business partnership, then this might be why you are a current energetical or vibrational match to this person's desires or wishes. Um, but for others of you, it might be the case that you already know this person or maybe you interacted with this person. Maybe this person knows of you, has seen you and something about you really caught their eye and they can't stop thinking about you and so they are possibly wanting to meet you a second time or reconnect with you um but for others of you because we do have this lonely gentleman here i feel like this is the case for the majority of you in which this is someone who is waiting for a relationship they are waiting for their counterpart they are waiting for their soulmate and i feel like they have been waiting for a long time we do have the number 19 and it's calling out to me the number one as we mentioned actually we have a lot of ones so this person might be a life path number one that denotes someone who is a leader someone who is an an initiator quite ingenuitive um but having the number 19 here number one does speak about new beginnings number nine speaks about coming to an end i see the number nine as tying loose ends before the closure. So I feel like this person has been in that limbo of starting maybe a relationship, but it never really unfolds. They might often get friend zoned or they might fall in love with the wrong people is what I'm getting or fall in love at the wrong time. So it never really works out for them. Um, and I feel like they've they kind of always been in this state of it's going to happen, but it never really happens. But this is someone who doesn't give up. This is someone who is quite hopeful, quite optimistic, even when the times get tough. And I don't know why this image, it's reminding me of the Titanic for some reason. The story that Jack tells Rose about the lady who is always adorned with all this jewelry and fancy clothing, waiting at the bar for her lover. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting from this gentleman. It's like this person has been waiting waiting for a really long time for that special someone. I feel like by this point, this person is really allowing their heart chakra to open up and for their heart to lead them towards that person, towards their person. We also have someone here on a horse hauling ass. So this person I feel is coming towards you. So if you're single, if you're looking for someone, then this is why also this person is manifesting you because again, you are a vibrational match. Your desires match this person's desires, or at least they are compatible. And I feel actually that this person has a lot to give, not just emotionally, but also financially. I feel like this person is pretty well off financially. They are quite stable. They might have a successful career. I feel like this person owns a business. They might even own more than one business. They might even be a freelancer. They take their work wherever they go so they can travel quite easily or their work allows them to travel is what I'm getting. Yeah, so this is also someone who doesn't give up easily on their dreams, on their goals. And that's why I feel they have accomplished quite a lot in their lifetime thus far. Um, they are not a giver upper in other words. Okay, but now we're going to move into the other cards which will let us know more about why this person is manifesting you, but I feel we already got some insight in regards to that. But maybe we will get better clarity with these cards and there we go so we have the world and it's in reverse let me put it upright for you guys oh is this an octopus i only see seven tentacles but okay anyways so we have the world in reverse so when the world is upright it denotes success <laughs> 
<laughs> it denotes an energy of completion coming full circle. It also denotes a sense of belonging. But we have this energy in reverse. As I mentioned before, where are the cards? Let me see. Oh, there's number 19. I was speaking about how this person is often in this kind of limbo state where they feel like they're about to embark in something, but then it never really happens for them. And this is more in regards to relationships. Having the world here in reverse, it is giving me that similar vibe. It's like nothing really comes into completion. Nothing really comes full circle for them. So let's say if they start a relationship and they are hoping that this relationship will turn into something more, it never really happens for them for whatever reason. There is this energy of disappointment with the world in reverse. So I feel like one of the reasons why this person is manifesting you is because they are quite disappointed in regards to their love life or in regards to their relationships. Maybe if this is not a love connection, this person feels like the friendships that they have had thus far have not been the best. If this person is an entrepreneur, maybe the business partners that they have associated with have not really been the best. And so they are seeking for someone who is in alignment with them. I also feel it's like they are looking for someone who can handle life the way they handle it um, because I feel like this person, they might tend to put a lot on their plate and they might delve into various different things. They might do various different things at once. Um, it's just like there's no limit to this person and so they don't really like when people put limitations on them. Rain on their parade is what I'm getting it's because they know that there are challenges in life. They know that there might be obstacles up ahead. They know all this, but they know that they will be prepared for it when the time comes. So they don't want to hear about the negatives. They want to hear more about the positives. They want someone who is as adventurous as they are. Someone who doesn't give up easily is what I'm getting. This is someone who has felt like the oddball. This is someone who has often felt like they don't fit in. They have experienced a lot of rejection in their life. And I feel like this is coming from infancy. Um, and so having the octopus here, it's giving me kind of like the, this alien-y vibe. <laughs> this person might be quite unique, quite eccentric in their likes, in their way of expressing themselves. I feel that they're very quirky. They have a very um, unique sense of humor. It's very pure. Remember, they were showing up as this ace of cups. So I feel they are very quite pure and innocent at the core. But I feel a lot of people have taken advantage of their innocence. And so they had to really build up this other person persona that is more assertive, that is more of a leader, that can be even a bit hot-headed at times, but it's not really them and they know it's not really them. And so I feel they have become aware of this and they are trying to call in someone who they can be themselves with. It's like they want and need to be validated that it's okay to be them, that it's okay to be who they are at the core, that their innocence, that their purity is not bad, that their quirkiness is not bad, but likable and that having so many dreams so many goals so many ambitions is not a bad thing either that it's okay to want to explore the world and constantly be wanting to learn new things and wanting to get to know a lot of people and i feel like this person really doesn't mind giving the shirt off their back but i feel they have been judged for doing just that because this is someone who is very accepting and I feel like the community that they have been in or the inner circle that they have been in, they, they are quite judgmental. And so they can't really resonate with that. Um, and I feel like they really want to get out of this energy now. Oh my god, I shuffled off camera. Um, but let me get a clarifier. So I feel like all of these reasons are why they are trying to manifest you. Because you, if you're resonating with that, you might be a person who is as accepting, as loving, who is non-judgmental. And that's that's why they are calling you in. Um, oh, yeah, you see, we have, to clarify, we have the energy of hold. This person just wants to be loved and accepted. They want to be held. They want to be nurtured. And look... This space is so small, and so this person here, this grown person, has to be crouching in the small space. And it's reminding me of, of the child who is an, an adult's body. Yeah, I feel like whatever fears, traumas this person has, they began when they were a child. 
And so it, it almost feels like their true self stopped growing at a certain age and this other persona had to come to the surface in order to allow them to survive in the environment that they were growing up in. But this person is looking for a partner. This person is looking for someone who can reciprocate their love, who can truly see them for who they are and accept them. Um, because the world also speaks about being seen. This person hopes to be seen by someone. Because as of now, they haven't really been seen or they don't feel like they have been seen by anyone. And I also feel like this is denoting that this person really wants someone to love and to hold and to nurture themselves. Okay, but now I'm going to pull out some cards that will let us know more about how you can benefit from connecting, reconnecting, or meeting this person. Honestly, if I were to meet this person, they would come off a bit confusing because there is so much going on with this person. Who they show up um, in the 3D is very, very different from who they are at the core. And it's like you really have to get through all their layers and they really have to feel safe with you in order for them to show up as who they truly are and to share their true feelings and emotions with you. Which, man, it sucks. Um, I mean, it sucks for them, for everything that they have experienced to have them feel like they needed to suppress that much of themselves. Um, okay, I'll take these two. <laughs> and we have solar plexus chakra number three and it says the frequency of the solar plexus chakra the yellow flower of life supports our sense of self our personal power and our willpower as well as our knowing of who we are and what our contribution is to the whole mm -hmm. and for our other card we have wow <laughs> 21 divine feminine the frequency of divine feminine supports our receptive nurturing and soft side allowing it to express itself openly and helping us to connect to our intrinsic understanding of our connection to all of creation all this energy is reminding me of the world card because it's speaking about the whole it's speaking about our contribution and all of creation and i laughed because actually for group one the card that fell out for them in this segment of the reading was Divine Masculine. So if you were called to group one, I do recommend for you to watch it. There might be some messages there for you that are relevant at this moment. But with the solar plexus chakra being here, as I mentioned, this person is someone who is currently working on self-worth. The solar plexus actually connects with masculine energy. It deals with our sense of self. It also strengthens our confidence and our assertiveness. If you are struggling with the same thing, if you feel like you have a blocked solar plexus chakra or you deal with low self-esteem, then this connection can help both of you heal that. Because since you share similar wounds, you can understand each other without really needing to over explain yourselves. Um, and it might very well be the case that you mirror each other. We do have the number three here. We add up two and one and we also get the number three. So I do feel like whatever you give, it will be reciprocated with this person or in this connection. Now we do have the divine feminine here. This is a very nurturing, beautiful energy. And it's reminding me of this hold card. All this person wants is to be loved, to be nurtured, to be accepted. And that's what the Divine Feminine is all about. So in this connection, if you also feel like you've been the oddball or if you often experience rejection, in this connection, you will feel accepted. That rejection, that fear of being left out in the cold will be healed through meeting or connecting with this person. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to manifest because like I said, there is this mirroring energy here. The healing might occur with you projecting your fears, your worries, insecurities onto each other, thus becoming aware of it, thus healing it. Or it might manifest by you being compassionate and understanding towards one another and thus helping each other out equally. So it all depends on you because if we run away from our fears, from our mirror, then it becomes difficult to heal. It becomes a challenge rather than a working together. But if we are open and we are compassionate and we are understanding, then this nurturing energy can come through and the healing doesn't have to be difficult. 
Wow, I spoke without pausing. I feel like whenever that happens, it's because I'm channeling directly from spirit. Um, because I tend to stumble a lot upon my words. And actually, it's been raining, and right now it just started raining very, very hard. So, I just mentioned that just in case it's meaningful to some of you. But I'm going to pull one last oracle card to get any more clarification. I hope you guys can hear the rain. <laughs> I love the sound of rain. Um, so one more card, please. How can group two benefit from meeting, connecting, or reconnecting with this person? Oh, that one flew out. We have number 17, just fell off the turnip truck. And the key words are naivety, obliviousness, inexperience, gullibility, study, and apprenticeship needed. Hmm, interesting. With this energy, I immediately received the message, some of you might be new in love or new to romantic relationships. Maybe some of you have been fearing entering into a romantic relationship because you're not ready to be vulnerable, you're not ready to be open in that way. Um, and I feel like Spirit is saying in this connection, you can practice that. You can practice being vulnerable and open because this person, once they open up, this person opens up. They pour out. If you've ever been told you're too sentimental or you're too much, this person has been told the same thing at one point in their life. And so you don't have to worry about that with this person because this person will get you. And I feel there's something that you both are inexperienced in. So if you feel like you yourself are inexperienced and that is what worries you or that makes you feel self-conscious of yourself for whatever reason, you don't have to feel that way with this person or that person won't really bring that up for you. Like they won't highlight that for you or amplify it or make fun of it is what I'm getting. In this connection, I feel like you can express yourself openly. You can be open about your insecurities with this person. You don't have to feel experience is what I'm getting, but I'm, I'm going to be very, very blunt and honest. I am getting a bit of a warning here. Always keep your head on your shoulders is the message I'm getting. It's nice to share your love and your heart with somebody, but I feel like spirit is asking you not to give your whole heart away in this connection because it's not about that. It's not about giving yourself up to somebody. It's about opening up to someone or opening up with someone, but not giving yourself away. I feel like that's very important because the other message I'm getting here is that your worth is not determined by how much someone loves you. It's not determined by a connection. It's not determined by another person. It is det determined by you, how you feel about yourself, how you view yourself, how you see yourself. No one can build you up and break you but you. So don't give that power away to anyone. Yeah, I feel like you will learn or experience a lot of new things in this connection or with this person. But for those of you who like the business partnership was resonating more with, this might even be that this person will come in and teach you a lot about business or how to network or how to profit. Um, it just feels like you two will learn a lot from each other and build each other's confidence is what I'm getting with the solar plexus chakra. And with Divine Feminine, this does speak about creation and creativity. You will also allow yourselves to open up creatively. Because number three is also a number of creation and creativity. It also reminds me of the connection between the mind, body, and spirit. So I do feel like this is a relationship that will be mentally, spiritually, and physically stimulating if that one resonates with you. Okay, but now we are going to look into the how and when you will be meeting this person. So in terms to the when, I do not like to give time frames because time is susceptible to change. It can speed up or slow down according to our actions, to our mentality, to our beliefs, our wants and desires. So um, instead of giving you a time frame, I'm going to look into what is the energy you will be in or what will be happening in your life when you will meet, connect, or reconnect with this person. So, one card, spirit please, for the when. Okay, two cards fell out. 
Oh, okay. And for how you will be meeting them. One card, please. Okay. So the Three of Cups, when it's upright, it speaks about festivities, gatherings, parties, socializing, as well as celebrations. And the Four of Coins, when it's upright, it speaks about materialism, stinginess, control, as well as holding on to something, possibly even obsessing over something or someone. So with these two energies being in reverse, when you meet this person or connect with them or come in contact with them is when you are not going to be feeling that social. And what I'm mostly getting is if you tend to be a social butterfly or you tend to place a lot of concern or importance on appearances, connections, social status, what others think of you, how others view you, materialism, then when this person comes into your life, it's when you are not going to be really stressing about those things. Your focus is going to be directed towards other things. With the four of coins in reverse, I'm getting this energy of giving to others. So if you feel like you are financially stable or you are financially well off or you have enough to be able to share with others, by this point, you're going to feel inspired to do exactly that. Share your material wealth with other people or a community or a cause. And remember that this person who is manifesting you was actually looking for someone to do just that with, to help others, to give to others. And that is why I feel that when you connect with them or meet with them, you yourself will be in that energy. You will be a match or they will be a match to you. The other thing I'm getting with these two cards is that your inner circle will be changing by this point. So if there is a time where you feel you are disconnecting with certain people or you are ending certain relationships where your inner circle is becoming smaller, that might also be a sign that this person is near because I feel by this point, you are only going to hold on to connections or relationships that you find meaningful, that truly resonate with you, that are authentic. And to be even more specific, if you are currently having difficulty on letting go of a connection or connections that you feel are detrimental, cause you a lot of stress, anxiety, doubt, and worry, when this person comes in, you will have finally let go of that connection. And once you release this, which could be a relationship, that's when there is space for this person who is trying to manifest you to come in into your life. The other thing I'm getting with the four of coins and the three of cups in reverse is that if you tend to overspend quite a bit, if you tend to go out a lot and indulge in certain activities that require a lot of money, by this point you might start noticing this type of tendencies and you might start pulling back from them. Maybe not going out as much, not overspending, taking better care of your finances is what I'm getting. And also being more mindful of where you are spending your energy, time, and wealth in. And with who. I'm getting a lot of becoming more aware of your self, your tendencies, your habits, especially in terms to your relationships and your finances. It does feel like your perspective or your view on things changes in which maybe material wealth is no longer that much of a concern or a worry or you're not placing your happiness on material things or popularity. Some of you might even be acting as a humanitarian by this point or deciding to be a humanitarian by this point or like I mentioned, a philanthropist if that message applies to you. A very specific message that I'm getting with this four of coins in reverse, some of you might even be deciding to sell a collection of yours or you might be deciding to clear out your closet or clear out your room. It just feels like getting rid of things that have accumulated in your space over time that you possibly don't even use or by this point you feel you really don't need a need for them. Okay, but now we're going to move into the seven of coins. So the seven of coins speaks about hard work paying off, finally reaping your rewards for something that you have been working for for a very long time. With the four of coins here, it might very well be the case that some of you decided to hold back on 
extra is expenses or possibly going out so that you won't have to spend that much money. Now I'm being reminded of Tiana from the Disney movie Princess and the Frog. She works very very hard and she doesn't go out in order to save up for her restaurant. So that's the energy I'm getting with the seven of coins. It's like you are deciding to work hard and save up in order to accomplish some dream or some goal of yours. So when you accomplish your goal, whatever it is that you were working for, when that finally comes into fruition, that's how you meet this person. So let's say you have been saving up to buy a car. So the day that you go and purchase this car, that's when you meet this person. Um, or you meet this person at the car dealers. Or let's say you have been saving up for a travel. So in your travels, you meet this person. Maybe it's the case that this person was traveling too. And wherever you both decided to travel to, that's where you meet. I'm even getting road trip with this painting that you guys chose. Some of you might have been saving up for a road trip or maybe we're saving up to relocate somewhere and where you relocate to, maybe that person happens to be there. I keep thinking of video games for some reason with the seven of coins. If some of you are video game creators, I'm not sure what the title of that work field is, maybe that person is also into that or works in that field and that's how you meet them. Maybe you meet them through work um, because this can also speak about climbing up ladder or you know, ascending in terms to your work or your careers. So what I'm even getting with the seven of coins is that some of you might reach some type of popularity or recognition through your work and that will allow this person to find you and to reach out to you because I do feel like this person is going to reach out to you. It's like you yourself have to get somewhere first and then this person reaches out to you and that's how you connect. So for example, let's say you are, I always give this example, but let's say you are a content creator. Let's say you make videos on YouTube and you have been working very hard to go viral or something like that. And then finally your videos or your content starts getting recognized. More and more people are starting to view your channel. And because your content is being viewed and seen, it's being recommended to more people. And then it finally gets recommended to this person. And then this person loves your work and they want to collaborate with you. Or maybe you yourself appear in the videos and they recognize you in some way, especially if they have already met you at some point. But those are all the messages I have for you guys. And I am going to pull out one last card just to get any last messages, advice, or guidance from spirit or possibly from the higher self of this person. And these cards that I'm shuffling are handmade cards that contain quotes from the animated series Adventure Time. And we already have two. And the first one says, the answer was so simple. I was too smart to see it. And this is a quote said by the character Princess Bubblegum. Some of you might currently be students. If so, I feel that the higher self of this person wants you to know that it will all be worth it. That's the message I'm getting. That might resonate with only a few of you. Um, but the other message that came through is, I guess I'm a special person and I am worthy of respect. And this was said by the character Ice King. I feel like this is them coming through. This is them realizing that they are worthy of love, that they are worthy of respect, that they are worthy of a mutual and reciprocated relationship. Or at least the higher self of this person is reminding you that you are worthy of respect and that you are a special person and that they see that. Really quickly, with this quote, the answer was so simple, I was too smart to see it. I feel like that's how they will feel when they meet you or when they find your work. It's like they were trying to find the answer to one of their problems or the missing piece to their puzzle. And then boom, there you are. <laughs> it's like you are the answer is the message I'm getting. Okay, but those are all the messages I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. And if you're new to this channel and you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in my website. And the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and until the next moment, bye-bye.
Hola stickers! So we are about to find out who is currently manifesting you and see what is the overall energy and personality of the person who is manifesting you as well as the why. Why are they manifesting you? What is their intention behind this? And then we will see how you can benefit from connecting, reconnecting, or meeting with this person. And at the very end, we will see when you will connect or reconnect or come in contact with this person as well as how. And to wrap up the reading, I am going to pull out extra cards to get any last messages, advice, or guidance that Spirit has for you or that the higher self of this person might have for you as well. Oh, and just a heads up, I am going to be shuffling the cards on camera for you guys, so please bear with me if the cards don't fall out immediately. Spirit sometimes likes to take their sweet ass time with me, so yeah, you have been warned. Okay, but now let's get into your reading. So as I connected with the energy of this group, I actually didn't feel much, see much. The only message that actually came to mind was, we hold back. And I mean, seeing that nothing else came through, it might very well be the case that Maybe you already know who this person is, you have already been in a relationship with them, you have connected with them in some way, or you are currently connecting with them, but there is not much going on, meaning you don't really share what you feel for each other that much. You hold back in terms to your feelings in regards to this person or vice versa. Or there's just some things that are being left unsaid between you both. If you feel like you don't know who this person is or you feel there's no one in your life who you feel this applies to, this might actually be the higher self of this person who is coming through at this moment wanting to let you know that this is how they feel you both mirror each other or resonate in that you both tend to hold back a lot in which you might not be very honest about your feelings or emotions or you might not express them to the fullest or in terms to your dreams, ambitions, and goals, you tend to hold back for whatever reason. And with the message here, all well, I feel like they want you to know that it's okay to express yourself. It's okay to dream. It's okay to want. It's okay to hope. You don't need to hold back anymore. And having this family of donkeys here with the message, Pa, Ma, and me, I do feel like this is someone who is wanting to start a family. Maybe you have a family with this person, or this is a family member, but there has been some distance between you both, be it physically, be it emotionally, and you are in separation with this person currently. And if so, first of all, they want you to know that they are well. And second of all, I feel they really hope that some reconnection can happen that's why they're trying to manifest you or that you can make amends or say what you need to say get some things off of your chest and bring some closure or clear whatever mess has been created yeah i'm getting different interpretations with this one i noticed we do have the number nine here i usually interpret the number nine as tying loose ends, getting prepared for a closure, for an ending. I don't usually use this term because I feel it has been misused a lot, but this might even be speaking about karma. And I'm going to leave it up to you guys to interpret that however you see fit. Because for some of you, this might be a relationship that has been ongoing or this person might come in and out of your life. But I do feel like there's some unfinished business here. Especially if you know who this person is, if you have been in a relationship with them. Take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you feel like you don't know who this person is, then this might very well be a new person who possibly maybe you have um, shared another lifetime with. And that's why there's that energy of an unfinished business. Maybe you were meant to create something together in another lifetime and it didn't happen and now you're going to finish it in this lifetime. Okay, but now I'm going to pull out the cards and the first cards will let us know more about the personality and energy of this person. So this one over here will let us know more about what the overall energy of this person is. So their archetype, ooh, their core energy, and we have the Queen of Cups. Ooh, interesting. 
and this one over here will let us know more about their 3D personality. How they are showing up in the 3D. Okay, those are a lot of cards, Spirit. I only need one card. I feel like shuffling one more time. Every day I'm shuffling. Okay, one card, please. Sorry, I had to pause because an airplane, an airplane was flying by and they be loud. Okay, one card, Spirit, please. In regards to this person's 3D personality, how are they showing up in the 3D? Um, two, is it, not three cards, that's too many cards, Spirit. One card, please. How are they showing up in the 3D? Hmm. One card, please. Okay, one card, perfect. I feel, I wonder if the reason why a card was taking a while to fall out is because this person does tend to hold back, so the energy is a bit unclear because of that. But for them, we have influence. Mm. Mercury and Libra, the seventh house. And this one over here will let us know more about what is it that they are experiencing or going through in their personal lives when they are manifesting you. And hopefully this will give us more information in regards to the why. Because I feel that when we are in a certain energy or experiencing certain certain things in our life, that influences us to manifest certain things, people, connections into our lives as well. Um, so let's see, what is it that they are going through, experiencing in their life, when they are manifesting those who chose group three. Okay, so we have the four of cups, number 17, the fish, it fell out horizontally, so I'm going to keep it that way and I'll explain why in just a bit. And we also have... <laughs> Perfect. The King of Cups, number 24, hand in hand. We have a pair here, perfect counterparts, the Queen and the King of Cups. Interesting. Okay, so there's a lot of things I'm noticing here. So let's see, what do I point out first? Okay, so first of all, this person might have Mercury in Libra or might be a Libra Sun, Moon or Rising because we do have the seventh house showing up here. Now we do have a lot of cup energy, that's water energy. So this person might also be a water sign, sun, moon or rising or might have water predominant in their chart. Now the other thing I'm noticing which is really calling out to me is this mercury energy. Because at the beginning, I was getting this feeling that there was some miscommunication happening between you and this other person if you already happen to know who this person is. Because Mercury is all about communication. We were getting that message of holding back. So I do feel like the majority of you who chose this group already know who this person is. Maybe you are currently in separation, but I do feel like you have been or are involved with this person in some way. Because there's a lot of partnership vibes here. We have a queen and a king of the same suit. We have... A couple here we have a family here so there is a couple here and I'm getting a lot of mom and dad vibes or the very least counterpart vibes so if this is resonating with you I feel like there is trouble or struggle on how to communicate exactly what you feel and what you think or this person might have trouble expressing themselves and they want you to know that Maybe you are excellent communicators with everybody else, but when you're face to face with this person, you just choke up. Um, or there is just difficulty in understanding where each one of you is coming from. Um, because with the snake being here and the snake being all coiled, it's almost like you twist each other's words. Um, maybe this person is trying to say something or come off a certain way, but you project your own fears and insecurities onto this person and so you twist their words into something that isn't or vice versa. 
Maybe this person does this to you. Okay, because the seventh of house does speak about marriage and long-term partnerships or relationships, contracts, agreements. So I do get the vibe that some of you might even be married to this person or were married to this person at some point. Because I'm noticing these two cards and the king of cups is looking toward the queen of cups, but the queen of cups is looking away. So it does feel like one person... The person who is manifesting you is trying to reconnect. It's trying to make this relationship work or wants this relationship to work. Maybe you have already moved on. Maybe you have already made up your mind. But this is what this other person is desiring. For others of you, it might very well be the case that you are a single parent or they are a single parent. And... They are looking for someone to partner up with. Um, they're looking for someone who will accept their family or to be accepted in someone's family. But I do get a lot of family vibes, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so if you're not looking to start a family or anything, maybe this is a desire that this person has for the future. Maybe not as soon as they meet you or as soon as they connect with you. But this is one of their dreams, one thing that they aspire to, be a parent. Um, have a family so if that is something that you aspire to as well then this might be why they are manifesting you because you are a vibrational match but with the queen of cups being here this does denote someone who is emotionally mature someone who is loving and loyal and nurturing the queen of cups reminds me of feminine divine feminine energy it's an energy of creation and creativity the, the queen of cups also denotes someone who is highly psychic very intuitive, very in touch with their intuition. So I do feel like this person is highly intuitive. They have the, what we call sixth sense. So they might be clairvoyant, meaning they see visions of the future. They have prophetic dreams, or this person might be clairsentient, meaning that they are quite, I, I think that's what it means, that they are quite empathetic. They can just sense things. They can pick up on other people's feelings and emotions. Thus, why they can also be quite compassionate and understanding towards others. This is also someone who is very sensitive in terms to energy. They can sense when the energy of a room shifts. Um, they can sense when somebody is starting to get angry, when somebody is upset. They're very perceptive as well um, because they're so in touch with their intuition. I'm also getting that this person can be an excellent cook, but this is someone who works with what they have and they create beautiful things out of nothing. And they really know how to make a house or an environment inviting and homey and comforting and comfortable. And I feel like this person is very beautiful. I wouldn't say they stand out, but once you look at them, you really can't look away from them. There's something so ethereal about them so elegant about them and actually this queen of cups is giving me such lonely vibes so now i wonder if this person has felt alone most of their life because a lot of people didn't have the courage to approach them and get to know them like i'm even thinking that this person might have that so-called resting bitch face <laughs> and because of that people are put off by it or they feel like this person is mean it's like people put this person on such high standards they create an idea of them and they'd rather stick to that idea than really get to know them which kind of sucks to be honest and so i am getting a bit of a reserved energy from this queen of cups um I don't know, I just feel like this Queen of Cups looks so sad to me. It's like they're so tired of being misunderstood, of people possibly even talking over them or twisting their words. And so this person might have even decided to close up their hearts for a while because they were just so tired and so done with it all. But you know, this is the Queen of Cups and the Queen of Cups is connected with that heart energy. So for as much as this person wants to close off their heart or pretend like they don't feel or they don't care, they can't. So there might be an inner struggle going on at times. And with Mercury and Libra being here, this also denotes someone who is very reserved, someone who chooses who to open up to. 
I feel like this is someone who loves the finer things in life, um, who loves art, poetry, cultured things. Um, this is someone who you can have very insightful and intellectual conversations with. This is someone who wants to get something out of the conversation they are having with you. So if there is an argument or a disagreement with this person, this person is one who will not go to bed until you have resolved this, until you have come into some agreement or some resolution because this is Libra energy. Libra is about diplomacy. It's about equality. It's about justice. It might very well be the case that this person is very open about their emotions, but maybe you aren't and that's why there's miscommunication because maybe you are more of a person who doesn't like to talk about things and this person wants to talk about everything. And so it's very frustrating for both of you because you can't really reach a middle ground because this is someone who wants to really get to know you so this is someone who wants to find out why you feel a certain way why you're acting a certain way they feel that there needs to be a reason behind everything if they ask you something and you don't have a reply to it or a why to it that might really frustrate them they might even feel like you're hiding something from them which oftentimes is not the case it's just like you might not know right or you just don't want to share and you know that's okay, you're in your right. And so this person might be really into psychology. Maybe that's something that they studied or like or public relations, sociology, and as well as the metaphysics, the occult, and all things spiritual. I do feel like this person will be very, very into that or might even practice some type of divination, spiritual arts, metaphysics. This person might even be a healer, have the talent to heal um, with energy or through energy. Um, so they might give really good advice or guidance or is the kind of person who has the answers for everybody but when it comes to them, um, they never seem to have the answers for themselves but, you know, it tends to happen. Um, this is also someone who loves beauty, aesthetics, who is quite sensual but maybe they don't share that with a lot of people only if you do get intimate with them and if they trust you they will expose that side to themselves with you i do feel like there's something about their voice that's very healing as well or has some type of magic to it but you know what it's strange i feel like their silence is even more powerful with this influence energy this person might easily get influenced by others or they can be quite impressionable. This might have something to do with their lack of self-worth or some insecurities, especially if this is someone who feels like they've never been understood by others or if they have been constantly misunderstood, especially if a lot of people in their life have projected their own ideas of them onto them. So there might be a bit of confusion in regards to who they are, who they feel they are. So if a person sees them a certain way, then they might start acting that way. Um, and because they are so empathetic and because they are so psychic and so in tuned with the energy of others, they might even sometimes pick up on the energy of others and claim it as their own unknowingly, unconsciously, of course, and they might start acting as that person. So if this person starts hanging out with somebody quite often, they might start acting like that other person, like picking up on their quirks, maybe on their way of speaking, um, their mannerisms and stuff. They don't even notice that they're doing this most of the time. We have air and water. We don't have any earth element here. So I do feel like there is a lack of grounding for this person. They're not quite sure yet on who they are, what they want, what they truly desire, maybe even sometimes in regards to how they feel. So it is important for this person to have people who have good intentions for them around them. Because if they have people who are not really looking out for them, who don't have the best intentions for them, then they will get easily influenced by these people. Okay, now we do have the Four of Cups and it fell out horizontally. When cards fall out horizontally, it for me sometimes denotes the foundation where the overall energy is grounded on. So the Four of Cups, when it is upright, it speaks about 
being unsatisfied with what you do have, discontentment, it can speak about apathy, a yearning, a longing for something more, for something else. So for those of you who you feel like you know this person, this person does feel like the relationship has gotten cold. But having the hand in hand here, I feel like they haven't really given up on this relationship. They still feel like it could be saved. They still feel like there's something more to it. They still feel like there's a lot that needs to be said. The other message or interpretation I'm getting from these cards is that this person, when they are manifesting you, it's kind of reminding me of group two in that they feel quite unsatisfied with their current relationships. Um, not just necessarily romantic, it can be relationships in general. But if they have had romantic relationships, they have felt unsatisfied by all of them. It's like they genuinely appreciate all the relationships, all the people that they have connected with, but every time they felt like something was missing. Because the Four of Cups can also denote an energy of illusions. And even feeling that most of the relationships that this person has been in, they have been based on illusions. I feel like a lot of the people who they have been in a relationship with have projected their own ideas onto them. And thus is the reason why they themselves never felt seen in the relationship and never felt fulfilled by the connection itself. The other thing I'm getting is that this person might have really, really, really high expectations, which are different from standards, by the way. Um, yes, this person has high standards too that go hand in hand with their core values, but I feel like their expectations are off the charts. Um, and it's because of these high expectations that nothing and no one ever satisfies them. And so when this person is trying to manifest you, especially if you feel like you do not know this person yet or have never connected or met them, they are trying to manifest the best of the best. They are trying to manifest the fairy tale romance, the love of a lifetime. And if you feel like this is you, in which you're expecting that fairy tale romance, in which you want that forever person, your soulmate, your counterpart, then this might be why you are the one who is being pulled towards this person because you are a vibrational match, because you have the same dreams, ambitions, mentalities, even core values. For some of you, this person might have recently come out of a very disappointing relationship and that's why they're even more determined, more adamant on finding this person. Um, the other thing I'm getting with the influence card, this person's expectations might very well be influenced by media. What they've seen in movies, what they've read in books. And I'm not going to lie, it all feels very romantic to me. I'm not getting any energy of like platonic relationship or vibes. I mean, it might be the case. Maybe this person is looking for a friend, for a true, sincere, and authentic platonic relationship, but I am getting a lot of romantic vibes from this group. Okay, but those are all the messages I'm getting for these ones, so now I'm going to move into the other cards. Okay, but now we are going to look into the why this person is manifesting you. I feel we already got some info, but we might get better clarity with these cards, and we have... Why so many cards? We have the, I believe this is the Seven of Swords, and we have the Page of Swords. Oh, so actually this is the Eight of Swords. Sorry, you guys, I suck at Roman numerals. But yes, the Eight of Swords. And this card speaks about feeling trapped. Sometimes it denotes a self-sabotaging energy. Oh my goodness, yes, Eight of Swords. We hold back. This is definitely an energy of holding back. Sometimes it is your fears that hold you back. It is your insecurities that hold you back. Your anxieties that hold you back. Because they make you believe like there's no way out. Like there's no solution. When in reality that's not the case. As you can see, this deer, she's not really bound. And these swords are not really trapping her. So this person is looking for a way out. 
is looking for answers is what I'm getting, especially with this Page of Swords. The Page of Swords does speak about delayed news. It does speak about communication. It's an energy of speaking out. I feel like this person is tired of being confused, of feeling like they don't have any say in the relationship, or feeling like there's this constant lack of clarity or information. It's almost like this person knows that you, them, or both of you self-sabotage this relationship because of your fears, because of insecurities, because of maybe even listening to what other people were telling you and not really seeing with your own eyes what was happening right in front of you. Because the Page of Swords can also denote an energy of gossiping. I'm going to be blunt honest. For some of you, this person might have even cheated, might have been unfaithful, or vice versa and they are trying to manifest you back into their lives, please use discernment whenever you listen to any messages being delivered through tarot. Especially general readings, because remember, there's a lot of people listening to one group, so it's going to be different for each one of you. If you feel like this is someone who you don't want to you know, reconnect with, you don't have to. Even if they're manifesting you, you don't have to accept them back into your lives. You always have a choice. I say this because I keep looking at this Eight of Swords and for whatever reason, I keep feeling like this is your energy. And I feel like this will only apply to those of you who have been in a relationship or are in a relationship with this person. I feel like this person constantly has you doubting the relationship or second guessing it. Um, and the page is the youngest in the court. So... Pages can sometimes be a bit immature, they can be a bit impulsive. They still have yet to grow into that kink and then into that emperor energy. So I do feel like this person still has a lot to grow. There's still a lot of discovering to do in regards to what they truly want in life or who they truly want to be with or what commitment means to them. Because I feel like this person says a lot of things they they want things but their actions don't really resonate with what what they say they want but if you have not connected with this person yet i do feel like this is a different energy if you have not connected with this person yet the reason why they are manifesting someone in their life is because they know who they are manifesting <laughs> they know what intentions they are putting out there so they feel that in this way they there won't be any surprises because why would there be any surprises? This is the person that I manifested. I know who this person is. I feel like that's their mentality. I almost get the feeling like they don't want to be disappointed. Maybe they have been cheated on. Maybe they have been lied to. And they are hoping that the relationship that they are manifesting, the person that they are calling in, will be one that they can trust. So they do want to find their person. And, and they are willing to work towards building a relationship but I feel with the eight of swords being here I feel like it's going to be quite a journey um because there's a lot of deep-seated wounds um with this person and possibly if these messages are resonating maybe you are mirroring each other maybe you might also share some similar wounds because actually with the donkey family being here it might very well be the case that you actually saw your parents cheat on one another or there was an unhealthy relationship between your parents and that in itself caused trauma or fear for relationships or commitments. Um, yeah. Okay, so a clarifier. Any more messages in regards to why they are manifesting them? So <laughs> we have manifestation and vulnerability. Okay, very self-explanatory. Um, Oh, the bunny. The bunny reminds me of, you know, getting it on and creating family, you know, having babies. So it might be very blunt and simple. This person is trying to manifest you because like I mentioned already, they want to start a family of their own. It's like they want to correct the wrongs, maybe the wrongs of their own parents. And actually we have the mother card um, at the back of the deck. So yeah, one of this person's dream might actually be to be a better parent than their parents were to them or to have a better relationship than their parents. Um, 
I just feel like they want to be a good parent to their children. And with this vulnerability card, they want a relationship that they can be open to. They want somebody that they can extend their heart to, who they can trust. I'm getting trust issues here. So because we do have the fox here, it's like they want to find a partner that they can trust so they don't feel like they have to be sneaky all the time. Because it's almost like if they feel they can trust their partner, they immediately start reacting in a very sneaky way themselves. Because the Page of Swords can also speak about vigilance, feeling like they need to constantly be reading between the lines and that might often lead to them twisting another person's words or seeing things that aren't actually there. So there is a bit of mistrust going on with this person. It's like this person hopes that somebody might come in and that all of that will go away and that all the traumas will magically disappear. At least that's what they are trying to manifest. And and it really seems a bit unfair to the other person on the other end. Since you are the one that they are manifesting, it's not your responsibility to heal them. Um, and they need to learn that. And I feel like they will slowly come to realize that. But one of the things that they are asking is for someone to be compassionate towards them. Someone who can, who they feel safe enough to be vulnerable with. And if these messages are resonating, resonating with you then maybe you are also manifesting this person but uh, now I'm going to pull out the other cards which will let us know more about um, what you can get out of this connection or how you can benefit from connecting reconnecting with this person or meeting them because this one is really Really interesting. <laughs> Group three is always very interesting. Okay, so we have Tantric Journey number 42. The frequency of Tantric Journey helps us to unlock the hidden knowledge and wisdom that we intrinsically hold about how to reach a state of wholeness and completion through our sensual experiences with ourselves and with another. Wow. And I'm going to pull out one more card. See how you can benefit from meeting or connecting with this person. One card, please. Oh, one flipped over. This one. <laughs> And we have number 19, sweating like a sinner in church, guilt, remorse, nerves, worry, confession, coming clean, apology, integrity needed. Mm. So it's a very repetitive message, but with this sweating like a sinner in church card, there is something that you or this person needs to get off their chest. Possibly there needs some forgiveness. Oh, oh, look and look. We do have the message coming clean. Yes, there is a lot of that energy of coming clean. Now thinking back on the King and Queen of Cups, for some of you, this might even be related to your parents. Maybe your parents in unison are working together to manifest a meeting with you in order to come clean about something. I feel like that will only resonate for a very few of you, but there is some guilt here. There is some remorse about something. Connecting with this person will allow to release that and let go of that because with the Tantric Journey card, I'm getting this vibe of intense spiritual healing. So reconnecting with this person will activate some healing. It might trigger and through that trigger, it will activate a healing. Because I'm even thinking of like the subconscious, like really delving deep. Maybe even pulling up to the surface a trauma or a fear or an experience of the past that you didn't even remember or didn't even knew existed up until this point. And I'm noticing all this purple here with the fan and in this card and purple is a very spiritual color. Um, so I am getting that vibe of a spiritual awakening, I, some type of activation, but it feels like an activation for healing, some intense healing, closure, letting go of. I was picking up on essential energy at the beginning with the Queen of Cups. 
if it resonates with you, because I know it's not going to resonate with everybody and that's okay. Um, but if it resonates with you, where you are trying to connect more with your sensuality or with your sexuality, I feel that's something you can do in this connection. Because I feel like there might even be some guilt or remorse in terms to your sensuality or sexuality. And if this has nothing to do with sensuality or sexuality, because you don't resonate with that, this might be something that you feel shame over, guilt over. Um, I'm not necessarily feeling like maybe you can be open about it with this person, but there's something about this connection that allows you to face whatever this is, recognize it, and heal it. Because there is this energy of hiding here, which is kind of the overall energy we were getting with this group. So, And I just felt like saying, it's time to come out of the closet. It's time to stop hiding. Or maybe with this person, you find the means to forgive yourself if forgiveness is necessary. And in that, you release that shame and guilt. But again, this can be in regards to anything. And I do feel like if this is a romantic um, connection, there will be a lot of physical intimacy in this connection. Again, take that if it resonates with you. If it doesn't, just leave it. But yeah, there is this vibe of a lot of physical intimacy and healing through that physical intimacy. Because there will be a lot of that vulnerability occurring through that physical intimacy. Okay, but those are all the messages I'm getting with these two cards. Okay, but now we are going to look into when and how you will be coming in contact or connecting with this person or reconnecting with them. Um, and in terms of the when, I'm not going to give any specific timestamps because time is susceptible to change, meaning it can go quote unquote slow or fast depending on our actions, our way of thinking, our decisions. So rather than give you a time frame, we are going to see where it is that you will be in life, what you will be in experiencing in your life when you are about to meet this person. Okay, so, ooh, okay, and we have strength, and for the how you will be meeting with them, we have the five of cups, okay, and at the back of the deck, we have the lovers, I just felt like sharing it with you guys, I thought it was pretty interesting, okay, but the strength card speaks about courage, overcoming, inner strength, confidence, as well as compassion. I'm also getting the word tenacity. You will meet this person when you are feeling the most empowered. And when you have recently come out of something that you felt you wouldn't be able to come out of or overcome. I feel like by this point you have already faced some very difficult challenges and if you feel like you're going through something challenging right now, this strength card is letting you know that you will make it through, you will overcome this, you will come out of this victorious. If you are recently going through a divorce or if this is a separation, if that was resonating with you and that is a very challenging thing for you. I feel like this is the point in which you feel like you are healing this, when you, in which you feel like you are finally letting go of this or where you are finally gathering your strength and building yourself up again and finding your own grounding and your own foundation and realizing that, hey, you have it in you to keep moving on and to carry on and to keep on enjoying life and experiencing it to the fullest. So if it is the case that you know who this person is, the one we are speaking of, who is manifesting you and you want nothing to do with them, you don't have to accept them back into your life. You don't. They can manifest you all they want, but if you say no and if you tell the universe, hey universe, nah, -uh, then it's not going to happen, okay? But if you are recently going through it and you're wondering whether you will ever be able to recover from this, you will. This strength card is telling you that you will. This card also speaks about overcoming self-doubt and it's kind of reminding me of that Eight of Swords energy. And I was feeling like that Eight of Swords was representing some of you. So if you feel like you've been constantly in the doubt, 
about yourself your self-worth or a situation by this point you will finally be overcoming that doubt you will be feeling very sure about yourself very sure about who you are and where you stand and what you want for yourself and what you feel deserving of some of you by this point if you are single you might even decide to remain single like by this point you're deciding I'm gonna dedicate now more time to myself I'm gonna enjoy my single life I'm going to take better care of me first before I decide to commit to anything or anyone and then that's when this person comes in um, now with the five of cups here the five of cups does denote sadness, loss, grief, crying over spilled milk. It also speaks about guilt, trauma. So when the Five of Cups shows up, it's not so much that you have recently lost something. I'm going to give different interpretations here like I have been doing thus far, but for those of you who do know who this person is, have connected with them in some way, it might very well be the case that yes you're moving forward but you know as we move forward sometimes we look back it's it's normal right and so i feel like this five of cups is you looking back to the past yes you feel like you're recuperating from this heartbreak from the separation whatever it may have been but then um you might get nostalgic and start reminiscing about this person or this relationship. It's in this moment when this person, when you meet or reconnect with this person, because it's possible that maybe you decide to call them or maybe they are the ones feeling this way and they decide to call you or text you. And because I am getting a reciprocal energy here, it might be that both of you are feeling quite melancholic and so you reciprocate. If this person calls you, whereas before maybe you would have blocked them, because you are in this Five of Cups energy, you answer the call. Or you decide to meet up with them. The overall energy I was getting with this group was of clearing the air. And so it might very well be that all that was needed is for you to have one conversation with each other in order to finally say what you've been wanting to say, in order for you to forgive one another, to bring closure to the situation. And maybe that's what you both needed or what you both need. And so this reconnection doesn't signify that you get back together with this person, but it might just signify that you reach that type of closure with this person and then you are able to fully move on. But for those of you who are seeking to reunite with this person, to reconnect with them, then yes, there is definitely a possibility for, for that. So for others of you who feel like you have not met this person yet, I'm getting the scenario that you're feeling pretty upset on that day. Maybe you you recently quit a job or you're moving out. It just feels like you're very tired. <laughs> you haven't really slept that well. And you're up in your head thinking about all these things. And you're not really noticing where you're going. And then you bump into this person. For some reason, I'm getting like this Five of Cups energy is also coming from them. Like they might have recently broken up with somebody or or maybe they quit their job and then they are mourning this and grieving this when all of a sudden they bump into you. I get a lot of this bumping into each other kind of thing. So it's very kind of unexpected is what I'm getting with the Five of Cups. And possibly it's not going to be a very exciting moment. Hmm, but now that I recall, we did have the lovers at the back of the deck and we did have that tantric journey card. So maybe some of you, if you have already met this person once, um, bumping into them might resurface old memories of the past and maybe you might spend the night together. Again, that might resonate with some of you. Um, and the relationship blooms from there or even if this is a new person, you know, maybe sparks do fly or You just spend the whole night talking with each other. I'm getting coffee energy with this five of cups like maybe you Go out for a drink of coffee and time flies when you are with them and you realize that you spent the night together just talking or maybe actually spending the night the night together um, but I, I'm also getting this other um, interpretation in which some of you might actually be going to some type of retreat, um, maybe some type of group therapy in which you're trying to heal some trauma or maybe get over some loss and that's where you meet this person. 
I'm just going to pull out an extra clarifier because I'm not getting anything in specific, especially for those of you who don't know who this person is yet. We have the Queen of Coins. Mature, successful, practical. Oh, ooh! Um, maybe some of you are actually looking for a job, a new job, and the job that you apply to or where you are looking for a position it might be where this person works. This person might even own that place or be the boss there or the head there or hold some important role or position because this is the queen of coins. Or it might be vice versa where this person is looking for a job and they happen to apply where you work, where you are the boss and that's how you meet. Or it can be that you are looking for an apartment or somewhere to rent or dorm or something like that and this person is the owner of that place and that's how you meet. It just feels like maybe one of you is going to end up working for the other person. Or like I said, it could be a living situation type of scenario. Yeah, but those are all the messages I'm getting with these ones. Now I'm going to pull out any extra messages, for advice, or guidance that's that Spirit has for you. And these cards flew out. And we have, maybe my dad is not dad, but a kid stuck in a dad's body. Yeah, some of you might be dealing with some parental wounds. And then we have people make mistakes. It's part of growing up and you never really stop growing. And if this person happens to be a father, um, this might even be in regards to them. Yes, but those are all the messages I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. Let me know how it did resonate. And if you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in my website. And the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. Yeah, but that is all for now. So thank you so much for watching. And until the next moment, bye-bye.